from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering Cloud Foundry Summit 2018. Brought to you by the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is Silicon Angle Media's production of theCUBE here at the Cloud Foundry Summit in beautiful Boston, Massachusetts, even if it is a little bit of rain, sleet, and snow. Uh, at least the, the, the wind isn't whipping like it was for the Boston Marathon earlier this week. It's the second time uh, that we've had theCUBE at this program. It's my third time uh, bringing it in. Really excited to dig in with uh, some of the, the thought leaders, the users, really talking about digital transformation. And to help me kick it off uh, is a friend uh, of theCUBE, someone I've known for many years in, in the uh, communities and uh, various technologies, Lauren Cooney, who's now the CEO of Spark Labs. Lauren, uh, great to see you again, and awesome. uh, thanks so much for joining us. Definitely. Uh, you, gosh, you were, you were on theCUBE all, all week last week, and I now I was on theCUBE all week again. last week. Well, I've got a different host now. Yeah. I mean, come on, I had to do it with you, Stu. Yeah, John John Furrier's a little disappointed he wasn't here. John and I always said, we do like the open source tour. Um, and uh -huh. that, that's where I got to know you around some of the open networking stuff mm -hmm. uh, years ago, so. All the way all, back to open daylight. Oh boy, yeah, ODL. Uh, <laughs> those yep. were the uh, days. So, you know, those of us that have been around, we've got some of the mm -hmm. uh, some of the scars. I love some of the Twitter conversations during the keynote here mm -hmm. leading up to, it's like the battle royale, it's like the technologies that have won and the technologies that have died, and it's, you know, is it Kubernetes versus Cloud Foundry? Has serverless and Amazon's ascent just, mm -hmm. you know, blown away all of things all together? So before we get into all of these pieces, Lauren, what are you doing these days and what, what brings you to this show? So I'm, I'm now a CEO, I'm CEO of Spark Labs, and that is a consulting company that helps companies basically build product and bring it to market faster, or innovate faster, or drive new revenue channels and business models to market. I have been doing this at large companies for a while, and I think it's important that across the spectrum from startups to enterprise, folks understand the new models and methodology they can do with the advanced technology out there to bring things to market in a way that's relevant, important, and captures their audience. Yeah, so I, I've been watching Cloud Foundry since the early days. Remember, it started inside of VMware, uh, got spun out, it, it's open source foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, Pivotal, of course, is you know the, the main company most people think of. Mm -hmm. uh, they filed an S1, some interesting things reading through mm -hmm. those numbers, but it, it's a sizable ecosystem. And what I like what they've done here at the show, uh, Abby yesterday and Chip today, getting customers, uh, getting a broad cross section of the ecosystem, what are the cool tools that they're building? Mm -hmm. How is that? That digital transformation is not a buzzword. So everything from you know big old insurance mm -hmm. companies, uh, you know the government uh, doing things to you know cooler younger companies like Zipcar uh, and how they're doing yeah. really weird things there. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what's your take on on the show so far? Uh, this ecosystem mm -hmm. and let's get into it from there. Well, I'm you know I'm a huge fan of Abby and Chip and the organization as a whole. I just think you've got some really smart people there and uh, very strategic as well. I think what you want to look at is really the numbers of partners, so the Foundry members, and also the numbers of end users and the quality of those end users. For example, you had T-Mobile on stage, and they have 1,700 users of Cloud Foundry that are actually building across that in, the, in their own company. So that right there is a pretty good number for one company. Yeah, I, I love that. The T-Mobile, the they have 1,700 developers, and they only have 10 operators that kind of keep that whole stack up and running. So that, that, that's a nice, somebody said, you know, hey, uh, 170 to one uh, mm -hmm. um, is it, a nice uh, mix there. I think it's yeah. great, and I think that, you know, folks that actually are seeing this in production, it is, you know, it, it is enterprise ready. It's one of the more mature products that I see out there that people are using today and it, it works, right? You don't have to cobble things together, it just, it's you know pretty seamless for the most part. Yeah, um, one of the, when you look at, uh, there's been a lot of stats thrown out, as you said, there's a lot of users here. 40% of the foundation, according to Abby's numbers, are the foundation members are users themselves, mm -hmm. which is great to see them participating. Uh, it's that wave of open source we've been talking about for many years, is it's not just using, but we're contributing to it. You know, you're voting with your code, mm -hmm. not just your dollars, uh, and there's, there's a whole lot of reasons why, why companies are doing that. Open source is really, you know, table stakes these days for so many companies uh, to, to get involved. I think involved. it is, and I think that, that part of that is, it's important, you know, Abby was talking this morning at this pancake breakfast about how you know, they really take a look at their contributors and then how to up-level them to their um, committers in particular. So I think really it's, it's, a, it's a bar of quality that goes into that code as well. And just like you said, code talks. Yeah, so when you look at, okay, 
are these mostly just big old enterprise companies? When you look at the mix of what people are using, uh, one of the, the a survey that went out said 48% of people are using multi-cloud. I think that number is probably understated <laughs> when, mm -hmm. when you go with customers. There is a way to, towards more private cloud. The number was 62% of people are using private cloud, as opposed to when I think about Kubernetes, Kubernetes tends to be a little bit more starting in mm -hmm. the public clouds and moving between public clouds. Yep. Um, and then there's lots of discussions. We saw Google on stage, we mm -hmm. saw Microsoft on stage, talking about Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes going mm -hmm. great together. What's your take on that? Is it you know just kind of talking head noise out there that you know well you know Kubernetes is kind of this wave and it kind of took away from from Cloud Foundry? What what do you hear from the I users? I feel like we're talking about you know um, kids in middle school that have you know something against each other or something along those lines that the community is actually making up more than the actual communities that are building. So Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes actually are complementary. I said something on Twitter this morning about them, they don't compete, get it, and move forward. You really need the, the tools there and the right tools for actually you know, building those applications for your platform. And I think that whereas they're both platforms, there are tools that can be enabled on Cloud Foundry for you know, situations that developers and companies need. It's not necessarily a, uh, it's a, not a tit for tat, it's, it's you know, two things running side by side that work with each other. Yeah, and, and, and Lauren, you know, I feel like I, I, every year it's a new story. 2014, I was at the first Cloud Foundry mm -hmm. Summit, and cross town in San Francisco, the first DockerCon was going mm -hmm. on, and oh my gosh, containers are going to take over everything, and therefore, uh, we don't need that portability and wonderful thing that Cloud Foundry mm -hmm. does. Of course, two days later, yeah. uh, it was uh, you know Andrew Clay Schaefer and James Waters were like hugging Solomon Hikes and saying we're gonna you know work closely with Docker. There's a whole track on containers and serverless at this show. So yeah, the, we we always spend too much time. Oh, this point new cool technology kills everything. Before, in my <laughs> experience, you know. IT, especially enterprise IT, is very much additive. Mm -hmm. We need to understand what we can get rid of, but uh, it doesn't mean that you know. Okay, let's you mm -hmm. know burn everything down to the ground and you know. No, start over I, with, I think that's actually. I think it's funny you mentioned that because when you look at these, you know, these offerings, these solutions, that's what they are. They're not piecemeal. They're solutions. They're you know coupling of you know individual components together to create something more awesome for the users. Yeah, um, so you know, really what uh, we care about, I, I go back to Abby's slide at the beginning, mm -hmm. it's the intersection of interoperability, innovation, and velocity. Mm -hmm. uh, this space, it's always about faster, faster, faster. The promise of PaaS, something mm -hmm. we've been talking about for a long time, we don't talk even PaaS so much anymore, but mm -hmm. the platform, how do we have that development environment, you know, what, what do you hear from users? Uh, you know, are, are they happy with what they, they, they have today? You know, where are we on kind of the maturity cycle of, of these technologies? You know, pass is always an interesting topic. I think it's heavily overhyped often. Um, I don't even see people really using that term as much anymore. And I think that, that really what you've got is, you know, a marketing engine funneling that term, <laughs> you know, for better or worse. And what you really need to look at is the community that's here, right? The solutions that are here, the folks that are showing up, like Suse showed up and has this great new solution that actually kind of pulls Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry together. You know, it's it's really not about um, just the, the, the product stuff anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there are some comparisons though, you know, I, I look, this show's grown to about 1,500 people. Mm -hmm. so it's a nice size show. A lot of people that are still contributing to code, mm -hmm. lots of different projects involved. Um, the Cloud Foundry Foundation, which, you know, big shout out to them, they're the ones that helped bring mm -hmm. us to this show. They're part of the Linux Foundation. Yep. Uh, Linux Foundation uh, is actually, uh, you know, also does the CNCF, which mm -hmm. does the KubeCon shows. KubeCon show uh, in Austin was about 7,000 yep. people, uh, you know, growing. You're going to be at the, at the Copenhagen am. show. Mm -hmm. um, so there is lots of cross-pollination. Mm -hmm. It's not a zero-sum game. It's not binary in this world, but there are pieces that are getting more attention than others. Um, 
I'm excited to get in through this more. Want to give you any last final thoughts as to cool things you're seeing, things that you want to investigate more, or uh, you know, the things definitely, that look definitely the new application cloud application platform. I think it is that brings the Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry together. That's what I'm going to be looking at. Okay, and then that that, that was uh, Suse who I mm -hmm. believe uh, made that announcement. Definitely, right? I think that that for me is very uh, cool. The uh, I believe it was like the .gov platform or something that came out. I think that is just phenomenal that they pulled that yeah. together. Cloud.gov certification. Mm -hmm. uh, John Furrier, I'm sure, is going to be watching. You know, the federal space the government space is so hugely hot. We've been covering Amazon's uh, positioning mm -hmm. in that space. Uh, it's interesting. Amazon, they're a part of the Cloud Foundry Foundation. They're a sponsor here. They're not up on the keynote stage. Uh, when you hear, say, the people at Pivotal, they tend to skew a little bit more towards Google uh, and you know maybe a little bit Microsoft. Amazon's but, a beast. You know, Amazon. Amazon is you know the the, the, the beast out in, in this marketplace. <laughs> um, but federal government, you know, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of things happening in the courts and battling over who's going to win some of these huge deals. Amazon has a huge stronghold here, but it, you know, government is a is a big complex, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, multifaceted organization. Yep. So yeah, absolutely, that was one that you know caught me. All the Fed ramp support and all those things mm -hmm. are, you know, very it's phenomenal. Important. It's phenomenal for the users too and, and the developers that have been waiting to build on something that actually works, I believe. Okay, uh, so yeah, lots of Kubernetes already. Uh, I'm going to be talking uh, a startup that, that uh, you know, you were talking to me about that's in the, the serverless space uh, mm -hmm. in, in Cloud Foundry. We've got a bunch of users on, so really excited to get through. Lauren Cooney, thanks so much for thank joining you. us. Uh, we'll see you at many more events uh, throughout the year. And thanks to our audience, and thanks to the Cloud Foundry Foundation once again for helping bring theCUBE uh, to this event. We've got a full day uh, of interviews. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks for watching theCUBE.